This is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update for July 18th, 12.45 p.m. Here's a map from 1997. Hurricane Danny was forming on this date and uh, actually made landfall around this time. Uh, between today and tomorrow would make landfall with 75 mile an hour winds and dump a tremendous amount of rain over Alabama as it moved inland. But what's interesting about this track and this name is it, we're up to the D-name storm in 1997. This year we're only up to the A-name storm. But look what happened. We only ended up with eight name storms for the entire season. In fact, several of them developed early in the year as subtropical systems. And then at the height of the season, we only had one major out here, and that was Erica. And we only ended up with eight name storms. That goes to show you can never extrapolate what's currently going on and say, okay, the rest of the season is going to be slow. Or if it starts out like gangbusters, you can't say the rest of the season is going to be like gangbusters. Now, if you look at 2005, here's Hurricane Emily. We were up to the E name storm, and this was making landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula as a major hurricane. 150 mile an hour winds briefly became a Cat 5 south of the Cayman Islands. And look at this track. Isn't that familiar with what we've seen so far this season? Uh, west, east to west toward Mexico. Uh, but as it, you would expect, uh, later in the season in 2005, we had quite a bit of storms that were developing and hitting the southeastern United States. So again, you can't look at early tracks and extrapolate that e into the later in the season as well. And what happened in 2005? 28 named storms. Half of them went out in the Atlantic. The other half uh, affected land. So... Um, we could have a very active season yet to go. Uh, we have a long way to go yet. But there are no storms out there right now. Here's the front page map of Hurricane City. Um, just while this is up, by the way, you can click these little white circles and ship and buoy observations to get the current weather conditions in the Atlantic Basin, which helps you to determine whether something's developing or not. Here's the outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Yellow circle up for the wave east of the Leeward Islands, less than a 30% chance of development. It's following an upper level low and the wind shear is pretty high. But what I am getting increasingly concerned about is an area down south of Jamaica here that's in a more favorable environment, warm sea surface temperatures and less shear and pressures are beginning to fall there. So we need to keep an eye on this and it wouldn't surprise me if the Hurricane Center puts the yellow circle up and, and or an invest over the next day or two on the system in the Caribbean Sea. Here are the pressures from sailweather.info over the Caribbean Sea. All high pressures right now, 1016, 1015, 1013 down near Jamaica. So it's not really low pressures at the moment. And uh, you need low pressures around 1010 or lower to start seeing development down there. So it's going to take a little while for these to get cranking, if at all. Here is the... 78 degree isotherm temperatures from the Hurricane Research Division. Now what these are, are temperatures that are warm enough to support hurricane formation well below the surface of the ocean and you need 78 degrees or higher to get to uh, maintain hurricane status in most cases. But look at the Caribbean uh, pressures uh, or um, anomalies down here. Very warm. Uh, these are going down hundreds of feet below the surface of temperatures warm enough to support hurricane formation. So there's a lot of uh, energy down here in the Caribbean for systems coming through in the future. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. All right, let's take a look at the water vapor loop from NOAA. And you can see several swirls in several areas of disturbed weather. Let's go ahead and tell you what's going on. This is an upper level low. And what happens when you have an upper level low is you have wind shear behind it and it comes out of the west and it shears the tops of the storms off and here's our yellow circle on the uh, hurricane uh, uh, center forecast and they're they're at the outlook and they're showing that this is uh, going to have a low chance of development because of these upper level winds now most of the models take this over the greater Antilles and really don't develop it very much this down here the Canadian model wants to develop it and head toward the west that's an uh, area that I think has a better chance of development and this is an upper level low in the eastern Gulf of Mexico with a wave following it. Probably not going to develop, but we'll keep an eye on that as well. But overall, things are pretty quiet in the basin as uh, the conditions are not quite ripe just yet. And again, we're monitoring the cams out in the um, Gulf of Mexico from the oil spill. And there they are. There's all the cams going. They have it capped. And they may release the, the um, cap once again and start pumping some of the oil to the surface. If the pressures don't get up to about 8,000 pounds per square inch, uh, they, they may think that there's a weakness down there and they might go ahead and release the pressure and pump it back into the ships. But right now it's capped. We'll continue to monitor these cams on HurricaneCity.tv until this situation is finished and they have this ca well capped, uh, sealed off and finished. And then we'll focus on 
hurricane season. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back with an update in a couple of days or if we get development any sooner. Thank you again for visiting Hurricane City.